Welcome to the protagonist pub. My name is Tammy and this is where characters gather. And today we are going to do the coffee book tag. And uh, it is too late in the day for me to be drinking a cup of coffee at this point. But I will share that um, if I were drinking a cup of coffee, 99.9% .9 of the time you will find me with the dark, bitter, black as night coffee cup or coffee in my cup. Every once in a while you will find me with a latte or with some, you know, cream in my cup. But that is the exception, not the rule. Um... I am not a huge fan of pumpkin spice lattes. If I want a latte, it's generally going to be a mocha. Unsurprising if you know me. And I love me a good, you know, eggnog mocha. As soon as I can, you know, reasonably start putting eggnog in the fridge, you will find me with an eggnog mocha or gingerbread mocha for that matter those two I will admit to you know absolutely adoring so in general it's black coffee for me okay first prompt black name a series that's hard to get into but has hardcore fans I I don't generally find things hard to get into, but one that has hardcore fans and I'm, I've started, I probably need to restart at this point, is the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. This is the first book. This is Eye of the World. And the reason why it's it fits this prompt is that this is... Classic high fantasy, which has fallen out of favor with, you know, a certain crowd. And it is, it is long. You know, this is the first book and it's 814 pages of this oddly sized book. But it is very well written. It is complex. It tells a definitive story. And it has incredibly hardcore fans. Do I think the Amazon series has done this justice? Absolutely, I do not. It, it bears little to no relation to the content of the books. And I will leave that there. Prompt number two, Peppermint Mocha. A book that gets more popular during winter. And I really don't have a choice for this because I... You know, there are so many things you could choose. So what actually fits? You know, devotionals become more popular at Christmas time with certain people. Books in cold settings become popular... And I cannot think of anything that actually fits this prompt, to be honest. What becomes more readable for me during winter are big, thick books. I love nothing more than to curl up with the book and just tune out the world and, you know, listen to rain falling on the roof and... Enjoy the fireplace and the dogs curled up next to me and, you know, Dave, you know, playing a game or watching TV or whatever. That is, you know, winter perfection for me. Do I have a book in mind for this prompt? No. Because what I pick up when that, you know, big book urge happens 
is very, you know, mood based. So I don't really have a choice for this one. Prompt three, hot chocolate. Favorite children's book. I have very, very many of these. I'm going to narrow it down to one. That would be the Winnie the Pooh series by A.A. A. Milne. I loved Pooh all of my life. I still have my very first one. At this point, he has almost no fur left on him. He has no eyes. He is safely tucked away in a cupboard where I can see him and, you know, he's protected, but... You know, he's not in danger from the dogs or, you know, falling apart. I loved reading those books as a kid. I would, or I turned to them as comfort reads, probably until I was seven or eight. I enjoyed reading them to, you know, the younger kids in the family as well. They're always a book I'm going to gift new parents. So it's Winnie the Pooh for me. Prop number four, Double Shot of Espresso. A book that kept you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. That is a recent read for me. It's been returned to the library. That is Firewall by Diane Mills. This is the first book in the... name the series name just fell out of my head it's right here I absolutely adored this it was it opened up strong the pacing remained perfectly on point with the text it wasn't an insta love story there was no trauma romance this was just an incredibly well written Christian romantic suspense I do not understand why she flew flies under the radar. She is a superb romantic suspense author and I am going to continue to read her back catalog. Prompt number five, Starbucks. Book you see everywhere. Well, I don't go to Starbucks. They don't align with my um, politics and how I spend my money. But a book that I see everywhere, um, that would be the Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I have read it. I will link my review down below. I absolutely loved this book. I did not expect to enjoy the Horny Dragon book. I absolutely enjoyed the Horny Dragon book. Is it for every reader? Nope. Did I love it? I absolutely did. I loved it so much. I bought the second one. So you're not going to hear me badmouth the book. I absolutely adored it. Prop number six, Hipster Coffee Shop. A book by an indie author that, and give them a shout out. So, I um, tend to read a lot of indie authors. Kindle Unlimited is great for that. There are plenty I could shout out. But in this case, I am going to shout out Stay With Me by Carolyn Astfalk. I absolutely loved this story. I will link my review for this down below. This is Catholic contemporary fiction. It is in an age range of protagonists that I don't generally enjoy. And oh my gosh, the size of that spider on my front window. Um, hang on. Yo, that spider is huge. And there's nothing I can do about it except stare at it. Because it's, it's... Oh. Okay, back, back to the book. Um, Carolyn has another book that is on my Kindle that is... All of Us? Covers right here. I really want to read this book. The protagonist in this book is much closer in age to me than the protagonist in Stay With Me. I am looking forward to it immensely. I think she is a very underrated 
author. Oh. I think she's deserving of far more attention, both in the Catholic community and in Christian fiction in general. She writes excellent characters and excellent faith and these books were just it the, stay with me was just stellar it just it was absolutely stellar prompt number seven oops accidentally got decaf that would be more than an oops for me a book you were expecting more from huh Why is this here? Oh, I know I was here. Okay, a book I was expecting more from. Well, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be The Lord of the Rings. I read it this year. It was part of my Dave 24 and 24 challenge. I had never read Tolkien before this year. And part of the reason this was less than I was expecting, I think, is because I listened to it versus physically sat down and read it, you know, reading it. I plan to reread it now that I have the encyclopedia, you know, to connect all the dots. I did fall in love with Lord of the Rings. Not because of the movies. I didn't like the movies. Yes, I know. That, 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 that's heresy. Um, I fell in love with it at the very end of the third book and at that point I was just like I, I am all in and Eowyn just captured my heart in that last section of the book enough that I am going to go reread it I'm going to sit down and physically reread it read the appendices all of it I was so disappointed as you know the book opened and progressed and in large part I think it's because the story is so familiar in the culture that we understand what's coming and we know what to look out for for lack of a better description and that presumption of you know knowing what's going to happen next was unfortunately just kept you know I, I knew what to anticipate next when I reread this I'm going in with a much different mindset so I look forward to be reading this as a clean reread with notes. Okay, last prompt. Perfect blend. A series or book that is both bitter and sweet, but ultimately satisfying. And it's kind of, this it, is definitely related to the first, the last prompt I just did. That is The Hobbit by Tolkien. Read this earlier this year. Again, Overly familiar story, lack of anticipation, ultimately, I loved the story, but it was very, it was a, a, a bittersweet love story for me because it was so... so familiar I didn't get to experience it new I didn't get to fall in love with the characters I didn't get to experience them for the first time on the page 
And I think that is very unfortunate. And it, it very much colored my reading experience. And that may just be something that's unique to me. But I did not, you know, look forward to opening the book because I knew what was going to happen. I knew the story basics. I it, There was nothing left to uncover on my own. So it was a, it was a bitter, sweet read for me. I'm glad I read it, but it wasn't, it would have been much different had I read it, let's say, you know, when I was 15 or 16. Okay, so that is this nice short coffee book tag. I am going to tag somebody, a couple of people on this one because I know they love coffee. So I am going to take Anne, tag Anne over at In Search of Wonder. And I'm going to tag Amanda over at Book Lover Amanda. They both love coffee. They both, you know, are known to uh, have a cup or two a day. So feel free to do this tag if I didn't tag you. I enjoyed pulling books for this. It was somewhat challenging. And I appreciate a ta challenging tag. I really do. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. And I will see you here next time at the Protagonist Pub.